Students, faculty, and staff, this is Mike Kotkin with a very important 2019-20 school safety video. I thought it was important that we put this information together for you because oftentimes, whether it's something as simple as a fire drill, whether it is something as complex and stressful as a code red situation, or something perhaps like a code yellow, which fortunately we haven't had to practice really any of those, it is important at any time you know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to follow directions from the teacher or the adult in the area, and what to do under the circumstances. So before we get to that, there are three things that I wanna to talk to you about leading into the school safety. First, relationships. Relationships between you and your peers. Relationships that you have with your teachers. Relationships um, with your coaches your sponsors, whoever the case might be, relationships, teachers to teachers. Building relationships, positive relationships on a daily basis is critical. And we know that together as Silver Hawks will continue to be a fruitful, positive, great place to come here at Lake Howell High School. And I encourage you with those relationships that we have together, friends or foes, when there's a time of um, real critical need, be it again, a code red, a code yellow, or fire safety issue that we come together as one Silver Hawk Nation. So with that, let me talk to you about some very basic school safety tips. First, all doors must be locked around campus at all times, always. Classroom doors and all other doors need to be locked around campus. So when you get to class on a daily basis, you're gonna see that the door is gonna be locked. That is for your safety. We know that we've never had an issue here in the United States where internally anything has happened because of a locked door. It's always been because of an unlocked door. So students, please ensure that the door in your classroom is locked and understand why your teacher has that door locked. It's for your safety as much as the safety in and around those in class as well. Also, all the exterior doors whether it's the blue doors going out between buildings one and three, whether it's the doors next to the senior cafeteria and the auditorium, whether it's the doors that go out towards the stadium near building 10, whatever the case is, if you see an exterior door, wherever that entry point is, close it, shut it behind you. If you see a door is open, we ask that you go and pull it shut, please. When you leave, for those of you who leave campus because you only um, are here a certain amount of periods and then you leave campus to go out to the parking lot, I kindly ask for the safety of your classmates, the faculty and staff here at Lake Howell, that you turn around, make an effort to push that door behind you closed. Again, we really want to try to have a single point of entry and at a school this big, it's going to be difficult to do. So again, I ask that you close and shut all doors behind you and pull on it to ensure that it actually caught and it's locked. Next, be on time to class. Limit the time that you're out and about in the hallways. We have put in place the 10-10 rule. 10 minutes of class belongs to your teacher the entire time, but that first 10 minutes is critical for setting the pace of class, setting the tone of class, and setting an expectation. So that first 10 minutes, we don't want you to leave camp, or we don't want you to leave class. And then the last 10 minutes, as your teacher is wrapping up the activity of the day, the lesson, the activities, whatever that case is, that the 10-10 rule is in full effect. Next, earbuds, something that simple. And look, I get it. I understand the need to have music, and I certainly respect that. But when you're walking around campus, please just have one earbud in your ear at a time. If you put both in and God forbid there's an emergency and you don't hear it going off, please. I'm, I'm okay with you walking around with earbuds in your ear, but I'm gonna ask that you consider only having one in and not two. Again, it's, this is for your safety. Next, see something, say something, do something. Please, if at any time, at any time here on campus, you hear something that sounds a little suspicious, 
do not hesitate to report or say something to an adult on campus. Whether you, it's your teacher or it's a custodian, whether it's an administrator, whether it is a counselor, whoever it is, if you have any concerns, don't ever hesitate to reach out to an adult and say something. Again, see something, say something, do something. Your responsibilities. And also remember, always, 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 let's make sure that we have our doors locked, secured, and when you're leaving campus, that you make sure that those doors are locked behind you. Now, let's take a few minutes and talk about the different drills that we're gonna be doing throughout the year. This year, the Florida legislator has mandated, this is not a Lake Howell rule or Seminole County Public Schools rule, this comes um, across from the um, Marjorie Stonewall Douglas uh, incident that happened about a year and a half ago, where now we're required to do code red, code yellow, and fire drills on a more consistent monthly basis. Throughout the year, students, we're going to be doing a series of complex drills, and we're going to do our very best to make sure that we're clear with you as far as how those drills will go, because they're going to be different each and every time. At this point, all the drills for the 2019-2020 school year are going to be announced. That's right, we're gonna tell you before the drills happen, but they're gonna be a little bit different, such as we might do a drill um, during lunch, or perhaps we'll do a drill between classes. But the important thing is, you will always know the type of drill and when the drill is going to happen. So rest assured, in that time of what would be high stress, you're gonna know if it's real or not. So with that, let's talk first about the Code Red drill. These tra trainings, again, are gonna happen throughout the year. It is important that you follow procedures. Your teachers will direct you, and if not, find the hard corner or safe corner in the classroom. If and when the moment were to allow and you could get to that free and, and clear space, do. But remember this, if this is happening out and about between classes, distance and space between yourself and the situation is your friend. So if at any time that this a situation were real, whether you're in the cafeteria or you're between classes, any time you can create distance and space between yourself and the situation, do so. However, it is critical that you follow the direction of the faculty and staff member who's there, and they will lead and guide and direct you. But as young adults, it's also incumbent upon you to make good decisions. Again, if you're in the classroom and this happens, you are to follow the direction of the person, the teacher, or the administrator, whomever's in there with you. But again, if you're out and about, create time or create distance and space. Next, what if I'm in the cafeteria and a code red drill or code red actually happens? Here's the best advice that I can give you. Find an adult, find that person who's in there and follow their direction. I know this is gonna be hard to believe and I've seen it happen before, but make sure if you can, to get silent and listen for the adult in that giant space of the cafeteria to lead and guide you with clear direction. Again, I've seen this happen before. Now, emergency situations are not going to be black and white. They're going to be very gray. It's going to be very situational to what's happening. And it is important that you have a clear mind and you try to listen to the adult who's in the room. But as I said a, a second ago, if you're in a situation such as this, distance and space, if safe, is a good thing. What if I'm in the hallway or courtyard in a code red? Same as the cafeteria. If there's an adult around and you can find him or her, follow their direction. Again, it's not going to be black and white. This is not where I can say, when this happens, do this. It's very clear. It's not like that. It's situational. So again, distance and space is your friend. And if you can, create that between yourself and the situation. But your safety is first, obviously. Remember, if you can and it's safe, run. Create distance and space between yourself and the situation. Always try to follow, though, the advice of the adult. 
What if I'm in the gym during a code red? Same situation as the hallways, the cafeteria, courtyard. Just do your best to get silent if you can. Listen to the coach, the teacher, whoever is in the room, the administrator, whoever is in charge. And again, create a, a safe space for yourself where your safety is number one. Next, run, hide, fight. Yes, run, hide, fight. If you're in a situation and an active threat is imminent and it's upon you, you're going to have to do what you need to do in order to be safe and create perhaps a diversion or an alert or you have to actually take, it, take that threat into your own hands. By no means am I advocating violence, but if there were a real code red, red situation and there was nothing left that you were able to do, then certainly run first. Remember, distance and space is your friend. Obviously hide. If you're in the hallway and you can get into a bathroom, hop up onto a toilet if necessary. Get into, if there's something that's open, get into a stairwell, create that distance. But if all else fails and there's no other option, then this is the, the fight part. But remember, your safety is number one. Code yellows. Code yellows are designed for when there's a suspicious activity outside of campus that we're looking into. Uh, maybe something happened up at the road at the bank or maybe there was something that happened in the local neighborhood. What will the teachers do? They're going to continue with their instructions and the school day is going to progress as normal. It's a normal situation. The campus, the perimeter is locked. The classroom doors are locked and secured again for your safety. And the teachers are just going to do their normal thing. And for all intents and purposes, there will be no movement between classes in a code yellow. But as far as a classroom is concerned, all of that will remain the same. So. Just wait and follow the direction of your teacher in a code yellow situation. Fire drills. Fire drills are a little bit different than how they've been over the years, but over the last year or so, they are and will continue to be the same. So let me take a minute and go over fire drills. First, remember, do not immediately evacuate when the alarm goes off. Just wait for the direction that's gonna happen over the intercom. Again. Don't immediately evacuate, just wait as the alarm's going off and wait for the direction. Then be prepared to evacuate. Once you hear what's going to happen, there will be an announcement. And wait for the directions from the school intercom, whether it's myself or one of the other administrators, and adult will come across that intercom and tell you what to do. And at that point, you'll begin the evacuation procedures. You will always follow the adult, the teacher in charge, and follow his or her direction. Sometimes false alarms are going to happen. So what will the teacher do? Your teacher will continue with the classroom instruction. That's why we're asking you to hold that location until we come across the intercom, letting you know what to do. Next. See something, say something, do something. Again, see something, say something, do something. At any time, if you hear something and you can't report it to an adult, obviously an adult is the first person you want to report something. To be proactive, to get ahead of whatever it is, report the situation to the adult. If you're not comfortable doing that, there's the speak out hotline that you can always call. That number is 1-800-423-TIPS. Again, call at any time the Speak Out hotline at 1-800-423-TIPS. There's also the P3 app that you can download and the P3 app allows you to do the exact same thing and whether you go to the, um, the Apple Store or wherever you go to download an app, do so, but the, three, the P3 app is a great place that you can also see something, say something, do something. Silverhawks, I'm giving you a lot of information, I know, but be responsible for your school and for yourself. School spirit to me feels like at an all-time high. 
The school culture that we have here is second to none. It is the greatest, not only here, not only in Seminole County, not only across the state, but across the country. Our school spirit has no secondary rival. We are number one. And that school culture that you're a rich part of, we appreciate you, we love you, and your school and the safety of our school is number one. Remember, always take care of yourself and one another. There might be times when we don't always agree, but at the end of the day, we are silver hawks. Remember, take care of yourself, take care of one another, and as one, we will always rise as silver hawks. I say to you each and every day on the announcements to have pride, and I am very proud of you and the time and attention that you give each and every day to make sure that this place is not only the greatest place to come to school, or it's the greatest place to be involved, or it's the greatest place to have an opportunity to continue your education, but is also a safe place for you to come and feel safe and protected. So with that, I say to you, Silver Hawks, let's have pride. Be punctual, be respectful, have integrity, be dependable, and strive for excellence. And as always, go Silver Hawks. Have a great day. And again, go Silver Hawks. Imagine having to take a test on a subject that you have never studied. It would be difficult. That is why we do lockdown drills. While we hope the test or actual emergency never comes, we want you to be ready and we want you to be alert. The system we use to help us be ready is called ALERT. ALERT stands for Assess, Lockdown, Evade, Resist, and Tell. Our lockdown drills help us to practice the ALERT system. Lockdown drills typically take place while you are in a classroom. During the drill, follow the teacher's instructions. In an actual emergency, your teacher is trained to assess the situation and determine the safest course of action. During the drill, the teacher may discuss or practice ways to lock down the classroom to prevent entry. This includes locking the door and possibly using desks to form a barricade or even tying off the door handle to make it harder to open the door. Another important step in the lockdown is moving to areas inside the locked classroom where you cannot be seen from the hallway. While the drill may take place in the classroom, sometimes the safest course of action in an emergency is to leave the building. While this is obvious in a situation like a fire, it can also be true if there is a dangerous person inside of the school. A teacher may direct you to run or exit the building, but if you are alone, you do not need permission to evade someone that you believe is dangerous. If you do need to evacuate from the school and are not with a teacher, we ask that you tell what happened where you are, and that you are safe. This can include calling 911 or going to a nearby safe place. The reason we have to do these drills is obviously very concerning, but the drill itself should not be. If a lockdown drill causes you any concern or anxiety, please let a teacher, counselor, or school administrator know. Drills are practice, which help us better respond to an emergency we hope never happens. You can help us keep emergencies from happening. If you ever see or hear something that causes you a concern for your safety or the safety of others, please say something. Your concerns will be taken seriously. Thank you for your attention and your help in making our schools even safer and more prepared.